welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike Hale, Kevin Jank. Hey, that was pretty good. You got I this down with science. I nailed it. First time. <laughs> You've been practicing. So, Jank, it is now uh, your turn to uh, pick the book this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got the opening right, but then I can't speak. Uh, all right, <laughs> so what we're doing here. It's your choice. Tell the kids what comic we will be reading. Uh, We will be talking about Vigilante number three from 1983 in DC Comics. Vigilante number three. Mm -hmm. Now, why? Why did you pick this? (laughs) Uh, I don't know. You have to do some DC books sometime. Uh, And I figured, yeah, it's only fair. (laughs) Anyway. You know, it's mandated by court law, I think, that we have to every once in a while. Uh, and I'm somewhat familiar with the character in other mediums, like TV and stuff, so I figured, why not? You know, it's Marv Wolfman at the height of Teen Titans, so it couldn't be all that bad. Sure. Now, <laughs> uh, did, did you know anything about the vigilante? Uh, somewhat. Like I said, he was... Uh, He's appeared on the Arrow TV show. I think he was pretty much the big bad of, like, season five, I want to say. So that was a lot more serious version they had going on there. And then he was also on that Peacemaker show about a year ago. But that was obviously a lot goofier. And uh, he was kind of a loser who hung around with Peacemaker, even though Peacemaker didn't really want him to. Well, uh, here's what I know about Vigilante. He's a complete ripoff of The Punisher. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's kind of like they took the Daredevil and Punisher and threw them in a blender. Yeah. I didn't know anything about the Vigilante uh, until I read this issue, but like within two pages. And, oh, yeah, they just ripped off the Punisher for this. <laughs> and and I'd be more upset about that, except for Jerry Conway just stole the idea of the Punisher from yeah. that other fella. So who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. They all stole it from Charles Bronson. No, no, no. Before him, there's a fictional uh, book. We we talked about – go back to the oh, old archives right. of Flea Market Fantasy. We did a Punisher episode. I think the character's name was The Executioner, but I can't remember who the author was who did these uh, series of, like, fictional novels. And, yeah, they just ripped – Jerry Conway just stole everything from that. Yeah. And, I mean, to be fair, it's an idea that's been done to death by everyone. So yeah, everyone's ripped it off multiple times. Yeah, but uh, I can't get too upset because Conway stole it. All right, anyway, the vigilante, his real name is Adrian Chase. Yeah, He's at least this form- version. Apparently there's like five or yes. six different vigilantes out there, but yeah, this yeah, is we'll, Adrian Chase. We'll get to that in a minute, um, at least why there are so many. But uh, the vigilante is Adrian Chase. He's a former district attorney who becomes a Punisher ripoff. Yeah, his uh, family gets blown up by some mob people, right, or something like that, and yep. uh, then he becomes the vigilante. So, like you said, it's like Daredevil and Punisher because you got the attorney thing, and he's upset that the court system doesn't bring justice, so he's going to go meet out his own justice. Yeah, as the vigilante. And I got the impression that he was kind of a, a supporting character in the Teen Titans book prior to that, so they kind of dealt with him. Before that, and then they kind of did this whole vigilante arc with him. Yeah, his first appearance as Adrian Chase was New Teen Titans 23 in 1982. He then donned the vigilante persona in New Teen Titans Annual 2. So, yeah, he had like four, five, six appearances maybe as Adrian Chase, and then he became the vigilante. He was created by Marv Wolfman and uh, George Perez, who, as you mentioned, was this was the Teen Titans era of... uh, they were doing all that. Did you ever read the yeah. X-Men and the Teen Titans? I did, yeah. Oh, nice to do that one one day. Yeah. Apocalypse Now, I think it was called. It's called uh, yeah, it sounds about Dark right. Side yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the series was published from November of 1984 until February of 1988, a span of 50 issues with two annuals. And the series oh, ended, oh. Uh, the series ended, spoiler alert, when the main character killed himself. <laughs> so that's yep. why there are multiple vigilantes because the first one shot himself in the head. So. Well, I guess he's actually the second one. Uh, there's like a gold oh, case. No. Here course. we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you mean there was one way back in the day originally? Yep. They didn't like, like go back piece. and add one or anything? 
right. Yeah, no, apparently there he even had like a uh an Asian sidekick named Stuff the Chinatown boy or something like that. <laughs> Short round. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. yeah. That'd be ripped off six ways to Sunday. <laughs> Also in this book is uh, Cyborg. Yeah. I think we've talked about Cyborg on this show before. I can't remember, really, so we'll just go real quick here. Victor Stone is his real name. First appearance, DC Comics Presents 26, 1980, created by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. And uh, do you know the backstory of Cyborg? Um, I think that's one of the things that's kind of varied. Uh, much like everything else in DC, they've changed it a bunch. Um, I believe he originally was like maimed in a car accident or something like that. And then they kind of gave him robot parts to keep him alive. Uh, I know eventually they kind of merged the whole dark side and apocalypse stuff. And it was a mother box that changed him, uh, in a lot of versions, but yeah, something like that where his father is a scientist and, you know, experimented on him to keep him alive after some kind of horrible accident. Yeah. The origin I know and DC again, they have a thousand origins. Um, yeah. Post crisis, pre crisis. Uh, but his parents were both scientists, and uh, they they kind of made him a test subject growing up. They, they uh, subjected him to a bunch of intelligence enhancing experiments and projects. Ooh. But then uh, he he rebelled against his parents, so he started hanging out with a bad crowd. He started getting into gangs. Uh oh. Remember, Jack, when I joined a gang a couple of years ago? Remember yeah, that? we tried yeah. to. Talk you out of it, but you're like blood in, blood out. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. Still talk to some of the fellas, you know? Still keep in touch. But uh, then he went to Star Labs to visit his parents one day, you know? And th- th- those wacky parents, they were doing some sort of experiment to, uh, like, uh, summon an interdimensional being through a portal or something. So this monster came through this dimensional portal, and it murdered his mother – and it mutilated him. Yikes. It, it, yeah. <laughs> it mutilated him. And so he was on the verge of death. His father was able to get the monster back through the portal. And then he uh, he made his uh, son uh, you know, uh, into a cyborg, part robot, in order to keep him alive. Yeah. So, yeah. That's wow. cyborg. <laughs> what a dad. Yeah. He's part <laughs> robot. <laughs> So he's kind of like a Deathlock in a way, kind of, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of crossover there. Yep. And uh, so that's his backstory. There's also a villain in this book called William Stryker. Yeah, that name sounds very familiar. That's right. Do you remember <laughs> that name? Yeah, from uh, God Loves, Man Kills, the uh, the Reverend William Stryker. That's right, the crazy preacher, the X-Men graphic novel. And that mm-hmm. came out a, like a year or so before this, so... I guess Marv didn't even know maybe that that was the character's name or he. Was yeah, that is weird that even if they had the same last name, they would both go with William for the first name. It's like, yeah. wow. Very strange. So we've talked, talked Marvel Wolfman on here many times. Uh, I always think, you, of course, you mentioned the Teen Titans and stuff. I always think of him with uh, Tomb of Dracula, right? Is Tomb oh, of sure. Dracula. Yeah. Gene Colan. Sure, that's his. Uh... What he wants to be known for most. Well, actually, it's considered a very prestige book in the 1970s. So, you know, yeah, scoff all it's you true. want. But, yeah, <laughs> and he wrote Vigilante 1 through 15 and issues 19 and 20. So took a little break, came back. Two more and then left. Now it's 83 to 85. The artist here is a fellow named Keith Pollard. Yep. Name does oh. not ring any bells, but... Oh, really? No. Yeah, because he did, uh, like, X-Factor. He did a couple issues of X-Factor. Really? Like, like I think the first appearance... Jackson Guise did early stuff in X-Factor, and then I think mm-hmm. he did maybe just did one fill-in issue, like around three or four, somewhere around there. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with him, but he... Well, let's just talk about Keith Pollard now. Born 1950, originally from the Detroit area, so that's unfortunate. Then uh, he made his comics debut in 1974 and worked on titles like Master of Kung Fu, Astonishing Tales, and Black Goliath. He was a regular penciler on The Amazing Spider-Man from issue 186 to 205. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm surprised you don't know him. 
Yeah, I think, you know, I have this uh, trade paperback of like the early Black Cat stuff that I really need to read. That's, That's definitely in that area. So, yeah. Yeah, you nailed it because with Marv Wolfman was also on there. Uh, he introduced the Black Cat in issue 194. Hey, there yeah. we go. Yep, I need I, to read that. Yeah, he and Wolfman are like quite the pair because he also teamed with Marv uh, for Amazing Spider-Man issues 200 and Fantastic Four 200. Those are kind of marquee issues. And then he had a Fantastic Four run that lasted uh, from issues 193 to 201, and then 203 to 206, and that was 78-79. Then he was the regular penciler on Thor from 286 to 320 in uh, 1979 to 82. So that's pretty good, drawing uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Thor, and Fantastic Four. I mean, yeah, and some good runs on yeah. Yeah, a bunch of issues. So that's, yeah, that's something. Those are marquee books. In 1982, he went to D.C., and he drew uh, part of Wonder Woman 300 in 1983, another one of the milestone issues. Mm-hmm. Then he he drew uh, Green Lantern 157 to 165 in 82, 83. He launched the Vigilante series with Wolfman. He did the first three issues, and then he came back and did issue five. Hmm. Then in 1987, he returned to Marvel. He had a second run on Fantastic Four, this time with Steve Englehart. He did 16 issues between 310 and 328 from 1987 to 89. He drew Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., issues 2 through 10, and 13 and 14 in 90, uh, 89 and 90. Do you remember that series? Uh, no, not Fury really. Yeah. yeah I, I remember I bought, like, uh, I think maybe just the first issue back in the day. Yeah. I feel like they keep trying to bring, you know, Nick Fury back, yeah. but it's never going to be as good as it was with Steranko, so... It kind of just fails every time. In 1990, he and Stan Lee did a Silver Surfer graphic novel called The Enslavers. And then uh, he left comics in 1996, but he returned in 2019 to draw a story with Marv Wolfman in something called DC's Primal Age Giant. I don't know what that means. Hmm. Um, I don't know. That must have been an event I'd never heard of. But it's uh, pretty crazy that uh, he and Marv Wolfman have uh, remained buddies all those years. How about that? Yeah, that's pretty good. I wonder why he quit for so long. <clears throat> oh, I just got burned up. Yeah. All right, so there it is, uh, Marv Wolfman and Keith Pollard, uh, Vigilante. Let's look at the cover here for this issue, Jay. Yeah, your favorite cover. Yeah. I know you're excited <laughs> to talk about this. <laughs> why don't you describe it for the kids? Uh, so we got the creators up at the top, and then it says the power of cyborg against vigilante. Uh, and it's a shot of out the outdoors. They're out in the woods, uh, a lot of trees and shit. And, uh, we got cyborg. He's kind of standing there protecting this William Stryker guy who's kind of laying on the ground, uh, you know, trying to be all helpless and shit. And, uh, we're seeing cyborg through the legs of vigilante because we're seeing this all from, sh- you know, right behind vigilante's back. So we're getting a nice shot of Vigilante's non-ass. Uh, there's no shading where his ass is at all. It's just completely flat. <laughs> Staring into the void of Vigilante's ass. <laughs> yeah, the, the Vigilante logo is in yellow with the red uh, like shadow behind it. And would you like to describe Vigilante's costume? We don't get too good of a look at it here. Uh, no, just from the back. back. Yeah. yeah. It's actually... I don't know. I kind of like this costume. I um, I have to admit, like I kind of like it too. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's weird, it's goofy, but I kind of like it. It's kind of like Snake Eyes. Yes. Um, but well, how yes. Be a... like a ninja combined with a skier, I guess would yeah. be the best <laughs> <laughs> combination. <laughs> it's uh, quite the look. It's kind of like a blue black, you know, full body suit. Uh, he's got kind of like a, a white V and then a blue V up at the top, like where his skull is. Um, and that goes into a, like a Cyclops-esque visor. It's kind of more like ski goggles. Yeah. <laughs> That's really where you get the, the ski look. And then he's got that same kind of white V and a blue V going down on his chest as well. And then like a big yellow utility belt, very Batman-esque. And uh, kind of white gloves and white boots. That have yeah. little black. Uh, like hash marks on them. And the ski goggles, they're uh, rimmed in white and then a red lens like Cyclops, like you yeah. said. But, you know, they're big goggles, like the, the original Snake Eyes. Um, mm-hmm. kind of. So, 
yeah, it's a it's a weird outfit, but I kind of dig it too. Oh. Yeah, it is. You know, it is very goofy. So I can see why they brought him into Peacemaker to just be kind of a weird goofball. Because and they left the costume kind of the same. Like it's oh, they didn't change much. That's what yeah. I was going to ask if he still looked the same. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny, but I, I still like it. Yeah. So yeah, the cover. I mean, in general, I don't know if you want to put a hero's ass. Right in the camera, the face. Um, well, I, I mean, know. This, I know of at least one, uh, like, Savage She-Hulk issue, I think, that was part of, like, the Fall of the Hulks storyline, where it's basically the same thing where you had, like, uh, Jennifer Walters' ass. Well, that was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of a better way they could have done this, but um, maybe just the legs, the lower legs, but then it's, it's just Cyborg, and would you even recognize... I guess his boots are distinctive that you would know, but I don't know. Yeah, I would have just been. I mean, it's not else, it's you know. not terribly framed. Like you get the point of everything. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just I don't know. Not a fan. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's more interesting than just having them, you know, kind of one on the left, one on the right, kind of running at each other or something like that. So it's a little bit more, uh, you know, abstract than that. A little bit different. So when we open up the book, it says hunt. Exclamation point. And, uh, okay. Pablo Marcos is the embellisher, the anchor. Now look at the letters there, Jank. What? Gaspar? Is that yeah. Huh. You think the letter would take better care on his own name? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means, Gaspar. And, uh, Tony Tallin is the colorist. All right, so uh, we see Cyborg. This is a good shot of Cyborg. Uh, he's running through the uh, woods here, and he's got that William Stryker handcuffed to him because he has to protect Stryker from Vigilante. That's his mission. Yeah, that's his mission. Vigilante's out to kill him. But yeah. he's supposed to – This William Stryker is supposed to be going to jail for a year because they got him on some, like, bullshit, you know, gun ownership charge or something like that. Uh so he's going to get one year of jail time, but he deserves a lot more, at least according to Vigilante. So. Yeah, because it's William Stryker. He's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good like, guy. He, like, rapes ladies and stuff, you know? Yeah. And, so uh, bad that they end up in, like, a coma for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Because yeah, I guess like it. He, he raped the wife or the the fiancé or the girlfriend, I can't remember what it was, of uh, one of uh, Vigilante's buddies. And – uh she just, her life just fell apart, you know? She just went nuts. Yeah. And, and recovered. And so he was telling his friend, oh, you'll get over it. Don't worry. But then here, Vigilante, his uh, family dies in a hotel bombing or, or a house bombing or whatever. So uh, now he goes, oh, I understand. I understand your anger now. So yeah. he dedicates his life to murdering uh, criminals. So Apparently, he has already murdered the people who murdered his family. So now he's looking for other targets. Yeah. And uh, now he's going after Stryker. But Cyborg has to protect him. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you can't have vigilante justice running out there on the streets. You know? No. You have to, you have to go by the law. So. Yeah, it's that old chestnut of, you know, we got the one hero who's very got, got the moral code. Very strongly in place, and the other one who's just kind of a, you know, out for blood. That classic kind of Daredevil Punisher yep. <laughs> interaction. So as they're running through the woods there, Jank, uh, the uh, vigilante's up in a tree, and he starts shooting down at him. Boom, 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 boom. But uh, that cyborg, he's part robot, you know? Yeah. So he's, like, uh, deflecting the, the bullets. I forget what they call that steel that he's made from, uh, Prometheum steel or something like that. Some, uh, DC. Oh, okay. Talk. Yeah. He has a lot of weird metals. Yeah, it's like they're vibranium or whatever, you know. Yeah. Adamantium. He's lucky that he's kind of blocking all these bullets with the one metal arm and the one metal leg. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird way to kind of block bullets, but he, he's somehow <laughs> doing it. He's very good. Because, <laughs> you know, if those bullets hit him in the side of his head, that's all flesh. That would be a problem. Yeah. But they're hitting him on just the metal part. So. Yep. He's like Wonder Woman, but without the bracelets, just the yeah. one side of his body. <laughs> so uh, th this cyborg guy, he's talking to Stryker, and you can already tell this Stryker's a creep, you know? And yeah. uh, 
his striker's like, hey, you got to protect me. There's their robot cop. That's what he's yeah. called, a robot cop. Should have just shortened it to RoboCop. <laughs> yeah, wait. Ro- that was 1987, so, I mean, really. This- oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Mar Wolfman could have really been a fortune. If he- <laughs> I wonder if uh, whoever did RoboCop was reading this. And I'm like, oh, my God, RoboCop. It's an idea. <laughs> That's a- so what does Cyborg try to do there, Jank, to uh, take out the vigilante? Uh, he starts morphing his robot arm into... Uh oh, I think we lost you, Jake. Uh oh. Yeah, uh, you said he was morphing his robot arm into. Oh, into a white sound device. Uh, I can increase its output to one million decibels. And so, uh, wouldn't that just like destroy the, his head and the striker's head as well? Because they're like right there. Yeah, it would definitely destroy striker. I guess maybe cyborg would have some kind of built-in safeguards against his own weapons, but yeah, striker would definitely be just bleeding out the ear. <laughs> I would think so. Um, but it doesn't seem all that successful against Vigilante either because he just snipes it. Boom. Puts a bullet yeah. right through it. And he uh, destroys his little uh, fancy hand thing. So then in the midst of all that, though, Cyborg, uh, you know, he grabs Striker and he starts yelling. And he's like, shut up, man. Mebe, I'm supposed to bring you in. And I pronounced it Mebe because that's how it's written. M-E-B-B-E. Mebe. Yep. <laughs> kind of like the way I he say says it. All. Mebe. Yeah. But yep. nobody said, he, and how many pieces I have to bring you in? And then Vigilante snipes him, and he hits Striker in the uh, left shoulder. And uh, mm-hmm. But then we see Vigilante up in the trees there. He's like, damn, only in the shoulder, but Cyborg was too close. Next time. And he, like, uh, he just takes his time, and, you know, maybe get off another shot right now, you know. But he's like, no, wait yeah. a bit. We gotta have a good shot of him just posing in the tree, though. That is a good shot. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, I like it. And now this is where uh, the story gets a little. Uh, the uh, structure of the story gets a little weird. Yeah, because there are several flashbacks. Yeah. Why don't you, you just this chronologically? But they decided to break it up a little bit differently, which you know I appreciate it. It's a little different. Uh, this is where we get Vigilante just kind of thinking about his own uh, backstory a little bit. And uh, we get the the first time they brought Stryker to court, and uh, they basically let him go because of some paperwork error, some improperly signed search warrant. Uh, and his buddy JJ was, like, not happy about this, so he jumped on Stryker and was like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Uh, so they had to pull him off. Yeah, and later on, he's talking to him, and this is where we find out, yeah, like, the striker came in and just raped his wife, and she's been in a coma and, like, in a wheelchair and just never has really recovered ever since this. So, uh, yeah, Vigilante was like, oh, this is where I got to take shit into my own hands. Now, when they go into the flashbacks, they usually put the panels over top of a larger panel, and mm-hmm. the flashback panels are rounded on the corners. So they're not square panels. They're rounded little corners. So that's kind of an indication. Hey, we're in the flashback. And that's pretty clever. You know, that's not bad. And the first time they did it, I'm like, all right, that's all right. But then they do it like two or three more times. It's holy fuck. What are we doing here? But uh, yeah. So now we're back to the present day and we see the vigilante jumping out of the tree and he goes Mm -hmm. running after cyber. Wait a minute. I'm uh, yeah, my issue just cut off here. Big hell. I gotta reload Uh-oh. it. Yeah, gotta reload. Oh it. yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, so he he's running after them in the woods, and now we get another flashback, right? Or no? Yeah. Man, yeah, we get another one, right? Adrian, the yeah, a little bit, yeah. Just, yeah uh, yep. Jimmy's this, jumping up and down, clicking his heels. This time we've got him. Now is Jimmy wearing a T-shirt of uh, what is that exactly? A Puerto Rican flag? Puerto Rican flag? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's <seems> pretty <laughs> odd. And, uh, yeah, this Jimmy's all excited because, uh, I guess, uh, this, uh, vigilante guy, he, he operates out of a Winnebago, it looks like, or a, some sort of a mobile home situation. And sure. they're like, all right, we got this, uh, this guy now. We're going to kill him. Now we come back to the present day again and we see Sodborg still trying to protect Stryker, but, uh, Stryker, he's, a uh, he's shutting up now since he got shot in the shoulder. He's not he's not mean mouthing cyborg as much, you know. He's not talking back as much. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you noticed this, Jank. 
but uh, they were handcuffed together. You know, yeah. Uh, Cyborg's right wrist to Stryker's left wrist, and then for several pages there, the handcuffs just disappeared. Yeah, and now they're back. And uh, that's true. Yeah. Huh. Continuity there was a problem, but I don't. Know. I mean, we see it on his wrist, but I don't know that it's attached anymore to anything. But if you go back to when he shot, like those panels, like mm-hmm. it's pretty, like they're kind of looking like they're attached, but there are some panels where they're clearly not attached. <laughs> but yeah, continuity may be an issue here. Um. All right. So now we get another flashback, Jack. Right. So uh, tell us this flashback. Uh, so this is where we get, we find out why Cyborg is doing this all in the first place. Uh, they got called in by some guy, I don't know if he's the mayor or who he is, uh, some kind of big high muckety muck of the city apparently. Um, and he's like, always happy, or Robin's like, always happy to help you, Captain Hall. I guess always oh, the police captain, that makes more sense. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like trouble, Robin, definitely spells with a capital V, as in vigilante. Um, and so he tells him that, yeah, we're transporting, uh, this William Stryker guy and vigilante took out the tires, uh, and tried to kill him. We managed to scare him off and he took off on his motorcycle, but we're like, he's definitely going to come back. So we got to transport this guy to the prison and get him there successfully. Uh, so we need one of you or one or more of you to, to handle this. And they're like, yeah, we got other shit going on. So, uh, we'll just give you cyborg. <laughs> that should be good enough. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, Robin here, and I guess there's some controversy about which Robin this is. I don't. I, I think this is supposedly Dick Grayson, right? Yeah, I think it was definitely Dick Grayson. Yeah, but the problem this was is like I, before he became Nightwing, and but after I, he but left I, that. But I guess in the continuity of the timeline of things, he would not have been Dick Grayson here. I guess, like in the one trivia note on the DC fandom page, they said they kind of screwed it up. So, Oops. yeah, technically this shouldn't have been Dick Grayson because of the timeline of events, but whatever. Huh. I mean, if Marv Wolfman's writing both books, how did he mess that? <laughs> but uh, I don't know, and who cares, you know? Like, who cares which Robin? <laughs> who was the second Robin? Tim Drake? Ah, uh, Jason, Jason Todd. Oh, Jason Todd. He was the one yeah, that Tim blew Drake up in the-, in the warehouse? Yeah. Joker beat him up with a crowbar and then blew him up. J- Joker's a man <laughs> of the people. finished the job. Yeah, he's a man of the people. <laughs> See that. But now, what do you think about this? Because this, uh, this Robin here, whoever he is, he says he knows the vigilante's true identity, you know? Yeah. He's not so telling he, the rest of the team, though. Yeah, he doesn't tell Cyborg. Yeah, that's kind I of guess a, he feels it's need to know basis, and he doesn't need to know. <laughs> I think he would need to know. He's going out to try and stop him, man. Hey, by the way, hey, Cyborg, that's that Adrian guy. Adrian Chase. That's that guy, you know? But, uh, yeah. Because if I'm Cyborg, I'm like, yeah, hey, hey, Robin, I thought we were teammates here. You apparently like Vigilante more than me. Yeah, it's one of them deals. Yeah, you're looking out for him interests more than I. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if Adrian had just shown up, like, in his normal street clothes, like, I guess he could have just taken him out. Nobody would have known. And so now we keep going in this flashback, and we see Cyborg uh, driving uh, William Stryker, and he gets sniped from up above and they shoots him right in the engine of the car. The car blows up and goes off a cliff, but cyborg and striker jump out of the car somehow. And yeah. We find that out in a couple panels, basically we cut back to the present a little bit, but then in a couple panels, we realize that cyborg like stretched out his arm, his metal arm really long, like inspector gadget style <laughs> and just kind of grabbed onto the rocks. And now we go back to the present day, and uh, Vigilante's still shooting at them. Cyborg's still blocking them with just his uh, metal parts of his body. And then Cyborg picks up a tree, a yeah. fallen tree, and throws it at Vigilante, and it looks like it hits him. Yeah. That was would a big murder bump. a guy if you get yeah. hit by a tree. <laughs> Vigilante is not superhuman. I, I don't know how he walked away from this one. Or is it? Or are we supposed to think it just hits his gun because his gun shatters? But but it kind of <laughs> looks like a gun to block the entire impact of a giant fucking tree being hurled at you. I mean, he would be so dead. But yeah, he survives. 
I mean, yeah, I guess maybe it took out the, he leaned back enough that it missed him and just hit the gun. Like he limboed under it kind of. Yeah, I don't know. So now, like you said, we, uh, we get a glimpse of them jumping out of the car in his go, go gadget arm and he catches onto a rock. So vigilante is standing right above them on this cliff. Yeah. Is there any, this and is he, a chance. and he shoots his gun. Like he's, I don't know, what, six feet away from him? And he shoots his gun, yet somehow he misses. Like, can you explain what happened? Like, yeah, Cyborg... I mean, he hit Cyborg's, you know, white noise machine pretty good from a yeah. hundred yards away, but somehow when he's right dead on him, you can't seem to hit this guy. Yeah, because Cyborg, like, lets go of the rock or whatever, so they fall. I mean, I, I still think he should be able to shoot them there. Uh, then they, yeah. they fall through some trees, but Cyborg lands on his feet. Then they run to a barn or whatever, and uh, Vigilante takes out a gun, and he's still shooting. Man, Vigilante can hit every part of metal on Cyborg's body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can't well, it's kind of weird because he's not trying to murder Cyborg, so I guess he's got to be careful. Like, we find out he does have armor-piercing shells and stuff. That's what he used on the car, but he can't use those on Cyborg because he's not trying to kill Cyborg. You know Cyborg's a good dude. Yeah, but, I mean, he's picking the hell out of Cyborg's body left and right, but Stryker's yeah. right next to him, right next to him. Yeah. But he's not hitting him at all, <laughs> like when they're yeah. running and stuff. Um, so then Cyborg kicks a big rock. Vigilante jumps out of the way. Then Vigilante uses some bolas. I'm a big fan of the bola. Uh, you know? Not Ebola, but the Ebola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bola. Little balls with ropes, and you just throw them. Yeah. They tangle them up. So he cat he uh yeah these got spikes on them so they uh they uh, stick them to a barn house mm-hmm. and but cyborg he doesn't want to just rip them out his arm out because what would happen Jake yeah yeah he's I want to mess up these people's nice farmhouse yeah so I'll just sit here while vigilante beats the fuck out of me just cracks him with the left hook then a right hand just punch him uh. But Cyborg says, all right, enough of this. And he rips down the barn house. And he says, yep. you know, so, sometimes you need to use a little violence. Whatever it costs, I'll make it up to the people who live here. Do you think he did? Ah, uh, sure. He probably went back and built a new one. <laughs> the Cyborg arms, it probably took him like 20 minutes. But what if they were in the house when he rips it down and they're all dead now? Because he just destroyed their house. Ooh, yeah. That would be sad. Yeah. I assume that's these old people that we see in this next thing. That's like they're... You know, their barn, essentially. Yeah, that, that could be. Just killed, you know, all the cattle that were inside. Yeah, because it's not like it's a neighborhood. It's probably just a farmhouse out in the woods there somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so Vigilante, like, survives. Then he kicks Cyborg in the face, and he puts a gun up to Stryker, and he's about to kill him. But then Cyborg smacks Vigilante, sends him flying. And like you mentioned, there's an old couple in this house watching uh, throughout the window here. And then Cyborg says, you know what, I'm breaking these handcuffs off. So the handcuffs are back. They bust yep. off the handcuffs, and he starts chasing Vigilante. I like that shot of Vigilante running, too. Yeah. Um, I think he's like, I already told you, like, I'm not in this to prove what a man I am, so I'll run away. I got no problem doing that. <laughs> so they keep fighting in the woods, Jank. And again, Cyborg hates trees. Yeah. He's taking them down left and right. Karate chopping trees. Some of them flying through the air. And he kind of pins in, uh, uh, what's his name, Vigilante, with all mm-hmm. these fallen trees. And they start to fight. And then uh, what, what does Vigilante, he kind of gets the upper hand here, Jank. What does he do? Yeah. Uh, he just kind of, when Cyborg goes to punch him, he just kind of uses his own momentum against him, I guess, and just kind of flips him over uh, into a tree. Yeah. And then he takes his nunchucks out and, like, holds them over Cyborg's throat, kind of pinning him against this tree yeah so what do you uh, think he's doing there is he trying to kill him because he said he wasn't trying to kill him but that looks kind of like he's trying to kill him well, he's got a robot neck though so i guess he can't yeah. <laughs> i don't think he can i don't even know that he'd be strong enough to keep cyborg down yeah so cyborg then kicks him he does a little flip and kicks him sends mm-hmm. him flying and then we get a classic jack kirby shot of the hero <laughs> jumping <I> a vigilante <laughs> <laughs> cyborg's ass and taint and balls yeah that kind of kirby was famous for this uh shot <laughs> and he's jumping at vigilante 
and then he goes to punch Vigilante, but Vigilante dodges, right? Yeah. Because otherwise he'd be dead. And then uh, Cyborg punches him again now, and he's telling him the whole time, he's like, hey, you're lucky I'm taking it easy on you, because if I wanted to, I'd knock your head right off your body, because I'm a robot. You know? If I was a killer like you, you'd already be dead. So he punches him in the belly, and then uh, and then what he, happens? Uh, then he takes off Vigilante's mask, and he's like, what, Adrian Chase? Like, and he's, uh, Adrian Chase is just kind of confused. Like, He's like, Robin didn't tell you? Yeah, so then Cyborg's was like, wow, Robin's a real dick. How come he didn't tell me this? Yeah. So he kind of explains his whole backstory to Cyborg. Like, hey, yeah, I, I, uh, my family got murdered. I met up with some people who took me, uh, they trained me for like six months and they made yeah. me like an expert. <laughs> I know. Like, I, I know everything Batman learned in his like eight years of traveling the world in six months. I'm now an expert marksman, a lethal hand-to-hand combatant. All in six months. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things those people taught him, those mysterious people, what they taught him was to punch people in the dick. (laughs) It was the most effective move of all. So I guess Cyborg doesn't have a robot dick. Because he hits him right in the old Charlie Browns and Linus. And Cyborg goes down. And then he hits him in the head with the nunchucks. And then he goes running into the farmhouse. But Stryker is now taking the elderly couple hostage with the gun yeah. in the farmhouse. This striker, not a good guy. So Vigilante's like, hey, you let those people go there, tough guy. But then uh, the old guy, you know, he's like, hey, I'm not going to let this this uh, creep here boss around us. He tries to take Stryker's gun. Stryker uh, sh- shoves off the old guy and shoots him right in the belly. Bam. Kills him. Yep. So then... Uh, Vigilante jumps and he says, hey, the kid gloves are off now. Oh, well, thanks. That's nice of you, Vigilante, letting a an old, poor old man die. And then you decide to really fight. Get on you. Yeah, this guy's already, you know, done terrible things, and that wasn't enough. Yeah. But now he shot this old man. So he kicks Stryker in the face and knocks him down, and he's he pulls out a gun, and he's going to shoot him. But then what happens, Jank? He does kind of hesitate, though. Like, he had his chance, but yeah. the cyborg kind of punches his way in like the Kool-Aid man, uh, just kind of punches through the wall and shows up. He's like, hey, you put the gun down, Chase. Uh, I'm taking you both in. And uh, Vigilante points the gun at Cyborg now, and he's just like, you don't understand, do you, Cyborg? I agree with you. You're right. Cyborg says, tell it to, tell it to the courts. You're coming with me. No, stay back, Cyborg. I can't go. I said stay back. You You give me no choice. Bam. And he shoots Cyborg. Yeah, so the next panel... We see the Teen Titans show up. We got uh, what was it? What is it? Wonder Girl, Starfire, and, and Robin. Robin. And uh, we see Stryker. He's uh, he's rocking back and forth there on the ground. His eyes real big. He's all terrified. We see the old the old guy and the old lady in the background. He's dead in her lap there. And no, uh, she's still alive. Really? He's like eighty years old. Yeah. He took a shotgun to the belly. He's dead. I mean. He'll- She's kind of got her hand on his her hand on his head, like she's checking for a fever. Like I think I think she's uh you know he's still alive, but he will he will die shortly. He's he's not Starfire even back. says if you feel up to it, sir, I'll fly you to the hospital. Nah, he, he's dead. Just for that guy's dead. Just forget about it. No coming yeah. back. But Cyborg, he's on his belly, and it looks like he's dead. You know, and yeah. uh. But then Wonder Girl, she says, short pants. Yeah. <laughs> but she says, it's just a shoulder wound. Wonder Girl looks at him. It's it's a shoulder wound. The bullet went clean through. Oh, wow. So he's not uh, going to die, but he is a giant pussy because he took a shoulder bullet. And that striker got shot in the shoulder and he didn't complain. Like, he's still alive. He was still alive the whole time. He didn't. He was running around trying to murder people still. But this cyborg guy, half man, half robot, he gets shot in the shoulder and he's out down for the count. You know? <laughs> yeah, you think he'd already been mutilated once. Like, yeah. this, you know, big deal. Come on, shake it off. Rub some dirt on it, Cyborg. Let's go. Get back in there. You're Larry watching YouTube and shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> nice inside joke for the LCS listeners. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, that you're, Starfire is talking to that old guy. But, yeah, I mean, he's a corpse. Look at him. He's just waiting. To, <laughs> yeah, he's done. Uh, but also, because the timing of all this is weird, too, because Vigilante... Yeah. He uh, 
because again, this this old guy's got that belly wound for hours probably because uh, vigilante somehow went and got a tape recorder, or maybe that's in his utility belt. He, yeah, it's a very large tape recorder, and uh, he gets him to uh, he gets the striker guy to confess. So while he's get doing this whole confession, and he's recording all this. Cyborg is bleeding out on the ground, and the old man's bleeding out on the ground. But <laughs> apparently, this happens in like three seconds because mm-hmm. everyone's okay. Uh, then we cut back to uh, well, you get Robin saying, "Well, tape recorders aren't legal evidence, but the, they might lead the police to evidence they can use." <laughs> See, I don't know if that's how that works either. Like, I don't yeah, know if you can. <laughs> but anyway, um, so they go back to the mobile home uh, where they're their headquarters. And that JJ guy, he's very excited to see Vigilante comes back. And he goes, hey, I guess you killed him. He's so happy. And he's like, don't be so certain. I didn't kill Stryker. What do you yeah. mean? I wanted him dead. I thought you did, too. That's what the Vigilante's all about. That's what I thought I was, too. If I killed Stryker, it would have been in cold blood. I'm not a killer. I can't let myself become one. But he's already been a killer. Yeah. So It's not like he's crossing the line. He's already crossed yeah. that line. Why stop now? Uh, please understand. It turns me. out vigilante is not about killing. It's about being friends with guys with pencil thin <laughs> mustaches. <laughs> like Vince McMahon. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I was wrong to think I could put myself higher than the law. Yeah, there are problems. Maybe I could do something to resolve them. But killing isn't the way. You forgive me? And JJ says, I have to, Adrian. It's so easy wishing someone you hate were dead, but doing yourself is something else altogether. Thanks, Adrian, for saving us both. And he looks at him. He gave me the gift of pussying out. <laughs> <laughs> so now we come back to Cyborg in the hospital. Man, he's in the hospital with a shoulder wound. You're part robot. Let's go. You should probably just give him a new robot shoulder on that arm while they're at it, because he apparently can't take any injuries. So, thankfully, though, uh, all is forgiven because Vigilante sent him a greeting card. And it <laughs> says on the front, it's just a plain white greeting card that says, wishing you a speedy recovery, exclamation, <laughs> right on the front there. So, all is forgiven. I guess they and, were out of monkey cards. Uh, yeah, you got to get a monkey card. If you're going <laughs> to if you're going to apologize for shooting someone in the shoulder and putting them in the hospital, <laughs> you have to give them a monkey card. That's the only <laughs> way that things will be smoothed out. But then Robin reads it. He says, uh. I'm sorry for what I had to do, but I couldn't let you take me in. Please get better. Thanks to you, I have. And that's yeah. how it ends. Next, the exterminator. But now Cyborg knows Adrian Chase is the vigilante, and he knows Adrian Chase shot him. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, I, that's what I don't understand. Is Adrian Chase still an active district attorney right now, or is he just kind of? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think okay. so. Okay, that wouldn't make a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you know, Cyborg, he's supposed to just forgive him for shooting him in the shoulder. Well, you think that would happen a lot, but Cyborg takes it like such a bitch that maybe it does. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's your vigilante. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, this was perfectly adequate is what I would say. Like, this was uh, <laughs> average in just about every way. Um, neither good yeah. nor bad, but. Solid right down the middle uh, of the strike zone for me, where it's just like, okay, I mean, I've heard this, all these same arguments about, you know, vigilanteism versus moral code. Uh, I've heard all this before. It's not breaking any new ground. But at the same time, it was fun enough, and there was a lot of action, you know, with him chasing down Cyborg and stuff like that and punching people in the balls. So it was fun <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, the writing was a little weird at times. Um but, you know, it told a pretty coherent story, even with all the flashbacks. I kind of like the flashbacks. They're telling it a little bit out of order. Just breaks it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, I think you hit it right on the head there. It's perfectly average in every way. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, the art here, Keith solid Pollard. Art. Yeah, the art is solid. But I was going to say, I think uh, Keith Pollard is credited with just the layouts. And then Pablo uh, Marcos embellisher. So, because I was going to say, I didn't, I wouldn't recognize this as Keith Pollard if I noticed. So, I think it, we we are getting a bit more Pablo Marcos, like he did a bit more of it than uh, normal. So, but it is solid art. 
there are a couple good shots in here, like Vigilante posing in the tree and then running around and whatnot. So, Solid yeah. Solid letter by Gagawar. <laughs> Gagawar. <Yeah. laughs> Whoever that guy is. But, yeah, it's fine. There's nothing awful here, uh, but I don't think there's anything great here either. And uh, no. this is Vigilante, complete Punisher ripoff. So the ball's on these folks. Just doing this back in 83, 84, just saying, hey, we're going to rip off the Punisher. Although it is more nuanced, I guess, than the Punisher, who the Punisher never, luckily, really, in good stories anyway, never changes. He's never like, oh, maybe I shouldn't kill people. He's just always out to kill people. Like, Vigilante's a little bit more on the fence, and apparently, like, he does try to not kill people after this, at least for a, a good while. So it's, you know, it's a little bit different, I guess. And in He's fairness, kind of, now that I'm thinking about it, this was 83, 84, I think 84, maybe this issue. Um, but uh, the Punisher miniseries, which really jump-started the Punisher, because he was uh, just a side character in a couple issues of Spider-Man and whatnot. That wasn't until 1986. That wasn't until 1986. So that's really, really when the Punisher became big time, 1986. So yeah. technically... They stole the idea, but they did more with it. Yeah, Marvel sat on it for a good while. Yeah, because like in 83, the Punisher wasn't the Punisher that we know and love. He was kind of just a guy. When was the first Frank Miller, you know, Daredevil Punisher stuff? That was probably before this, right? That was Yeah, if it was Miller, that would have been 82, 81, 82, right? That would have been right around here. Um, so there you go, the vigilante. Will you read more vigilante? <laughs> um, probably not. I yeah. did look at some of the other issues. Like it looks somewhat interesting. It's not doesn't look terrible, but you know, not enough to keep me coming back. Probably. So what what are you giving this? I don't know if we gave the actual score yet. Uh, I'll give it a six, just above average because everything was was pretty solid. You know what? I think that's fair. Yeah, six, five, five or six. But I think the art is strong enough. And yeah, uh, so yeah, six just on the right side of of history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there it is, Vigilante from DC, the old Punisher ripoff. I guess there. I did see an article because uh, I once I saw that I googled up like uh, Punisher ripoff Vigilante, and sure enough, yeah, everyone was doing it. But I guess DC, they also had like about a dozen other Punisher ripoffs. And so did yeah. Marvel. So, yeah. Everyone yeah. rips off the Punisher. <laughs> All right. So next week, I uh, was having uh, some trouble picking what we're going to do here next week. But I figured, oh, you know what? We'll tie this all together because I remembered uh, Vigilante. He's out there trying to kill bad guys, right? You know? Sure. And I remember last week we did Secret Wars Ooh. 2. Yep. Oh, and we encountered somebody who you weren't even yeah. familiar with. I was and, familiar uh, with him, but I didn't know his uh, his exact killing methods. Yeah, the Scourge. Yeah, Scourge. The Scourge of the Underworld. So next week, from 1986, we will do Captain America, issue 319. 319. All right. This is right, uh, right about the peak of the Scourge stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of bad guys. There's a lot of funny storyline there. Yeah, I think 320 might be when it ends, maybe. So 319, but I think a lot of people get murdered in 319, I think. Oh, good, good. I don't know, but I think so. That'll be fun. Yeah, so, because uh, I had never read any of the Scourge stuff, you know. So, but I remember he was cool. Like, I remember in the uh, Marvel official handbook of the Marvel Universe, they had uh, the Scourge page, they would show all his victims, and he was just murdered all these people. So, yeah. Scourge, yeah. Yep. And then oh, I feel the, like all of those characters came back as just other people took up their mantle. Yeah. So I don't think Scourge really. <laughs> His much. life's work was wasted. Yeah. Uh, one other note about Keith Pollard. Uh, I, I guess he did the uh, he, the Marvel official handbook. They did a collection of some sort in the, I forget what year it is, but he drew all the character pictures in it. Like some. So, oh. yeah. Because yeah, I'm always a big fan of his handbook deals. Yeah. yeah. But those, those were great. All right. So uh, next week, Captain America 319 from 1986. And until then, don't get any jank on you. (laughs) 